afternoon everybody and welcome to this Dudley College of Technology live apprenticeship event. This event has been run as part of National Apprenticeship Week 2021 and should last around 20 minutes. My name's Emily and I am the Apprenticeship and Recruitment Hub Manager at Dudley College and then my co-host this morning is Ian Cole who's our Senior Employer Engagement Manager and then also co-hosting we've got Jennifer Morrison who is Marketing Officer for the College as well. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we kind of kick off the event in a minute or two. As I say this event is going to run around 20 minutes. If at any point your internet drops out or you do get sort of lost within the internet, please don't worry. The live that you, the link that you follow to get here will remain live, and you can always just click back on that link to join us wherever you come into. There is a QA and a function. If you look at your screen, you will see something that looks a little bit like two post-it notes with a question mark on it. If you click on that icon, that will bring you into our Q&A. Any questions that you send through to myself, Ian or Jennifer today will only be visible by us, so don't worry that anybody else will see what you're asking. So do send through any questions you've got and we should have a little bit of time towards the end to go through any questions you've got, but hopefully we'll answer most of your questions throughout the, the session this morning. This session is being recorded as well. We have a second session on Thursday um, and after Thursday, one of the recordings will be made available on the college YouTube channel for anybody to, to have a look at if you want to go back and review any of the information that we give you today. Just as a way of us keeping uh, track of who's attended today, if I could ask before you log out of this event that you put your name and an email address in the Q&A and send it through to us, that just allows us to send some information out after the event to, to everybody that attends today. As I say, they do come through to myself, Ian and Jennifer. No one else will be able to see any of your personal information, so it is completely safe. And as I say, if your internet does drop out or you have any issues, please don't worry, just click on the link you follow to get here and you'll be able to join back in straight away. So why choose an apprenticeship? Well, as it says on the screen, an apprenticeship is a qualification that's delivered as part of a full time job. So a company will employ you between 30 and 40 hours and pay you a wage and you will, you will complete a qualification or a standard as part of your job role. An apprenticeship is available for anybody over the age of 16 and there are actually no upper age limits so an apprenticeship is available to anybody. As I mentioned you are employed by a company so you are their responsibility in terms of pay and contract of employment and that company will put their time and money into helping you learn and develop your skills whilst at work but also gain that extra support and tuition from the college as well. An important thing to note, if any of you out there today are sort of particularly quite young and are between 16 to 18, I'm sure you all know that you are legally required to be in education once you leave school. So what I will say is whenever you want to apply for an apprenticeship through the college website, which I'll show you how to a little bit later, what I would say is apply, apply for the relevant full time course as well. The reason I say that is with an apprenticeship, you don't enroll as an apprentice and become an apprentice until you've actually secured a job. So it's really important that you apply for the relevant full time course as well as a backup. During the academic year, an awful lot of what we do is recruit someone from an existing full time programme. And as I say, because you are legally required to remain in edu full time education, if you are sitting in a full time course, for example, in September when the courses start because we haven't managed to score, score you an apprenticeship, we can then just recruit out the full time course. So as I say, it's just worth remembering that you don't enrol as an apprentice until you've actually secured a job and you've started work. So we just need to make sure that if you are 16 to 18, you have got that full time course there as a backup as well. So what's an apprenticeship? So a, a company can choose to either recruit an apprentice, which is what myself and my team in the college do through our apprenticeship hub, which is based at the Broadway campus, or a company can use apprenticeship funding to upskill their existing staff. As I mentioned, I manage the Apprenticeship Hub team um, and in the normal times we are based in the main Broadway campus just off reception. And we are open 52 weeks a year and we recruit apprentices all year round apart from a two year shutdown at Christmas. And we recruit in, in excess of 
100 apprenticeship vacancies every year and that is nationally um, and we have over two and a half thousand apprentices enrolled with us at the college which makes us one of the largest providers nationally um, as I say normally we are um, based at the Broadway campus but obviously in, in view of Covid we are at the moment remote working but that being said Covid-19 hasn't really had too much of an impact on the work that we do and certainly employers are still engaging with us and wanting to recruit apprentices for when Covid sort of is a thing of the past uh, and apprenticeships start at level two and they go all the way up to level seven. Historically apprenticeships really were only sort of level two and level three. It's only in the last four or five years that the government have invested money in, in allowing apprenticeships to give anybody a route into higher level education. So we will mention that a little bit later but as I say you can do an apprenticeship and start at level two. You can go all the way up to level seven. So to just give you an idea level two is the equivalent of five GCSEs, level three is the equivalent of A-levels, level four is a HNC, level five is a HND, level six is a degree and level seven is a postgraduate. So that gives you an idea of the kind of level of qualification and education that you can achieve through an apprenticeship. So it's a really good way for someone to gain an education whilst also having that hands-on work experience and developing within a specific role. So why choose Dudley College of Technology for your apprenticeship? Anybody who um, has been in Dudley in the last sort of five to ten years will have seen the absolutely massive investment that's happened in what's now known as the learning quarter in Dudley. Um, certainly I'm, you know, I'm a Dudley person through and through and I, I I'm very proud of the investment that's happened in the area over the last few years. So we've got the main Broadway campus, which is just on the Priory Road, which is the original campus. We've got Dudley Sixth, which is our specific sixth form centre. We've got Dudley Enhanced, which is where some of our catering provision is based. Dudley Cat Centre, which is the construction trade centre based on the waterfront at Merry Hill, which is where programmes such as bricklaying plastering are delivered. Dudley Evolve, which is in Dudley, not far from the old fire station, and that's where things like our salon, our sports centre and our beauty salon and art and design centres are based. We've got Dudley Advance, which is on the old Castle High site, which is where the centre for advanced manufacturing is based. We've got Dudley Advance 2, which is just behind Dudley Advance 1, and that's our centre for advanced building technology. We've got the Art and Design Centre in Briley Hill, um, which hosts art and design, but also our brand new digital area as well. And then one of the, the, the most recent and probably most exciting part of our sort of empire at the moment is the Black Country Marches Institute of Technology, which my colleague Ian will talk a little bit about later on. So what apprenticeship standards do we offer? Whenever you hear someone talk about a standard, what we mean is qualification. So an apprenticeship qualification is actually called a standard. And that there on the screen just gives you an idea of some of the many, many standards that we offer at the moment. As I say, going from level two all the way up to level seven. And we offer things such as um, business administration level three, which is one of our probably our most popular. We've got engineering technician with a number of different pathways in there. You've got some of the more traditional trades such as plastering, plumbing and carpentry, as well as some of the more sort of new modern approaches to education, such as geospatial um, and installation maintenance electrician and, and that kind of thing. So if you go to Dudley College website at any point, that will give you some more information. But as I say, that just gives you an idea of some of the many apprenticeship standards that are on offer at the moment. As I mentioned back at the beginning, an apprenticeship is a full time job where there is a qualification delivered as part of it. To be an apprentice, you must be paid a wage and that wage must be paid by your employer for a full time role between 30 and 40 hours a week. As it stands, national apprenticeship minimum wage is currently £4.15 per hour. That is regardless of the age of the apprentice, but some employers may pay more. But from April this year, so in about eight weeks time, that minimum wage will rise to £4.30 per hour. If you are over 19, you can only be on apprenticeship minimum wage for that first 12 months. After that, then your wage will have to rise to reflect the national minimum wage for your specific age bracket. And obviously apprentices don't pay tax whilst their earnings remain below the tax bracket. As I mentioned, some employers may incrementally increase your wages. What that means is as you move through the apprenticeship and complete certain units, employers may increase your wages. And there are some sectors that will pay more traditionally anyway. And obviously when you're going up through sort of high level apprenticeships, level four, five and six, then you will find that employers, employers will pay more. But that national apprenticeship minimum wage there is there in recognition of the fact that 
generally someone who walks in on day one of apprenticeship has no work experience whatsoever. So that national minimum wage is, is there on reflection of the fact that the employer will have to put quite a lot of training in initially to get you up to speed. So one of the most popular questions that we get asked through open events and such is what if you don't have your grade four or your C in GCSE maths and English? And it's a very valid question. What I would say is it isn't a problem. It's a very simple answer. It is not a problem. Every apprenticeship has a maths and English qualification as part of it. So you can complete your apprenticeship, but also upskill your maths and English at the same time. And that can be said for an apprentice who is recruited into a company, but also for existing staff as well. Um, apprenticeship should be available to everybody. And many employers are quite happy to support with the time needed for maths and English upskilling for their ideal candidate or for their member of staff. And every training provider will ensure that everyone on an apprenticeship receives the support they need to achieve their qualification. So even if when, you know, hopefully, you know, everything goes fantastic in GCSEs, but we understand that that's not always the case. In short, whatever happens on your results days or whatever GCSEs you have, please don't worry because there will be an apprenticeship there for you. Most requirements in terms of apprenticeships are actually set by the employer and not the college themselves. And as I say, most employers are quite happy to support with maths and English upskilling for that right candidate. So please don't let that put you off in any way. Another question we get quite asked quite often is, do I have to go to college? And the answer is not necessarily. It, it very much depends on the apprenticeship that you're doing, to be honest. Some of the apprenticeships that we do are delivered at the workplace, where you're in work five days a week. A new assessor comes to see you at work to teach and assess you in your role. Some of our apprenticeships, however, because they are quite heavily theory and knowledge based are delivered through what we call day release. That means that even though your employer would be paying you for five days a week, one or two days a week, you're actually at one of the centres such as the CAT centre or the advanced one or two building to be delivered in college as well. It just depends on the qualification. But as I say, whether you are day release or non day release, you are paid a wage for five days a week. So a new way to recruit back in September 2019, which seems an awful long time ago now, we launched our apprenticeship academies. These predominantly were sort of designed for school leavers as a way of recruiting young people. And we would get young people in on a four week program run during the summer holiday when the college was in shutdown, so it was nice and quiet, which gave young people the opportunity to have an introduction to engineering and kind of the opportunity to kind of familiarise themselves with college and get over some of those hurdles that be, can be quite scary when you're taking that step from secondary school into college education. During the course, we also invited a number of recruiting employers in to meet our academy graduates as an opportunity for them to network and meet the, the workforce of the future. So a year on from the end of that course, out of the 36 young people that actually enrolled on the academy, 17 of them went straight on to an apprenticeship at the end of it. The rest actually decided to go on to a full time course and complete their full time education. Um, but the academy and the way we, the, we took the academies as a way of getting these young people straight out of school, having them for a four week intensive course during the summer holiday and then allowing them to network with our recruiting employers really became a, a fantastic way of, of getting young people into apprenticeships. So in just about a year ago, just over a year ago, um, we decided we were going to do the academies again. Obviously, we didn't know what was coming, so we put the plans in place to have three academies running during 2020 and they were again in engineering. We had a modern methods of construction and also a hairdressing and barbering academy. Um, now, obviously, we all know what happened in 2020, but saying that despite COVID-19 and all of the restrictions that were put in place, we were actually still able to run those three academies. Obviously, there were some adaptations in terms of blended delivery um, and smaller group sizes to, to kind of make sure that social distancing and safety was adhered to. But those three academies did run again in September 2020. And we're now working with over 60 academy graduates, supporting them in finding their perfect roles. Um, and a great deal of those have already gone into apprenticeship straight off the back of the academies. Um, so the academies, as I say, are, they, they're predominantly for um, year 11s, but they are a fantastic way for school leavers who want to go straight into an apprenticeship to get a bit of experience before they start college in September. So without employers, we wouldn't have apprenticeships. As I mentioned originally, an apprenticeship is a qualification that's delivered as part of a full time job. So as an apprentice, you are employed by a company. They give you contract of employment. They pay your wages. 
you get the same rights as a normal member of staff in terms of paid leave and stuff like that. Um, and, and you are ultimately employed by that company. Employers really recognise an apprenticeship as a really valid way of getting someone in at the beginning of their career and through the apprenticeship scheme, getting them qualified and, and getting them trained up to be a really valuable member of the team. And we do work with more than 2000 employers nationwide. I say nationwide because just because we are Dudley College of Technology, our delivery is not just in the black country. Country, we do offer apprenticeships nationwide um, to a number of large and small employers across all areas and some of those you can see on the screen now um, and also <clears throat> a full health and safety inspection is carried out prior to any apprenticeship activity taking place and also a separate COVID-19 risk assessment is held for every employer as well so when the apprenticeship hub team that I manage are setting up interviews for example you and your parents and guardians can rest assured that we are doing everything we can to keep you safe in the current climate what we are doing at the moment is encouraging first interviews to happen via Microsoft Teams or Zoom and then if a second interview does happen face to face as it says on the screen we do not arrange any interview until we've got a copy of the employer's COVID-19 risk assessment just so so we know that we are doing everything we can to keep you guys safe. I'm now going to hand over to a colleague of mine Ian he's going to tell you a little bit more about the Black Country Marches Institute for Technology. Over to you Ian. Thanks very much Emily and good afternoon to everybody. Um, just spend a few minutes, as Emily says, uh, talking to you about uh, the Black Country and Marches Institute of Technology, which we're incredibly excited um, that it's opening in September this year. Um, so as it says on the, on the screen there, um, this is the next phase in the regeneration of uh, all the education facilities in Dudley. Um, and it's a £32 million investment. Uh, which is brilliant for the town uh, of Dudley and the wider region. Uh, next slide please Emily. Thank you. So the Black Country Marches Institute of Technology is uh, all about an emphasis on higher level technical skills. Everything that we uh, are going to be doing in this building is designed with employers um, with an emphasis on jobs and careers. We're going to be delivering it in four key areas, which are, as you can see on the screen, advanced manufacturing, medical engineering, modern construction methodologies and healthcare, with digital technologies as a cross-cutting theme uh, in everything that we do, as you'd expect in 2021. So e everything um, that will happen in the Institute of Technology, as I say, is, is, is based on those four key areas. And that's because uh, the demands of the uh, Dudley and Black Country and wider West Midlands region are for, for these sort of skills in the future. Um, and although, as Emily explained earlier, the college has been fantastic in the last few years at investing in facilities to make sure everybody gets the best opportunity for their learning, um, as an area, we don't have as many people progressing on to higher level uh, programmes as, as we would like or as the, the region needs uh, for its uh, careers. So this will give everybody an opportunity to go all the way uh, from that level two apprenticeship that Emily talked about, uh, all the way up to level seven uh, without having to leave the Dudley area. So it's uh, incredibly exciting for, for the region, as I say. Next slide, please, Emily. Thank you. So just to give you an idea of, of where the Institute of Technology is going to be, you can see from the uh, area marked in red on, on the slide there, um, it's at the Castlegate um, end of, of the Dudley Town area. So just opposite the, uh, the cinema and the bowling alley on the other side of the road, as you, you might be able to spot. Um, and in the very top left hand corner, we've just dropped a pin um, of the current Dudley College learning quarter. So it's just down the road from there with the zoo and the, and the castle in between us. Um, and that's part of a, a much bigger regeneration programme uh, for Dudley as a town, uh, where there's going to be other exciting developments uh, attached to the Institute of Technology. Uh, like the uh, Midland Metro uh, extension, so you'll be able to get there uh, on the, the metro uh, wherever you're coming from. There's also going to be uh, other 
uh, really exciting projects like the Very Light Railway uh, test tracks. Um, so lots going on down there. Um, and as we say, it's opening in September 2021, uh, and we're going to have a lot of learners in there over the next few years. Next slide, please, Emily. Thank you. So as I said a moment ago, th the emphasis of, of, of the building and the philosophy of everything uh, that we do there is going to be 100% focused on technical provision. So we're only going to be doing uh, courses in those four key areas of advanced manufacturing, medical engineering, modern methods of construction and healthcare. Um, and almost all the courses in those areas are going to be at levels four, five and six, which as Emily explained earlier, is very much at the higher level um, of qualification. So you would be gaining uh, either a higher national certificate or diploma or HNC, HND, uh, or full degree level uh, qualification as part of your apprenticeship there. And as it says on the screen there, what we, we really want to help people understand is, although you'll get those great qualifications at the Institute of Technology, more importantly, it's all about helping you uh, attain that career um, and that, that job um, to, to shape your future. And the qualification is what will get you there, but it's very much about the career at the end of it. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as I've just said, what we really want you to, to look at this with um, beginning with the end in mind. So with our help um, and with the help of local employers, we'll be working with you to make sure you know what career you're going to be going into um, in one of those four areas. And then we'll guide you on what qualification um, would be the best route into that but it's very much uh, about making sure that you're equipped with the right skills, knowledge and behaviours uh, as part of your apprenticeship to be able to do uh, the job and the career that the local employer needs you to. So this is very much a partnership with local employers in the area to make sure that um, the training that we provide and the apprentices that uh, complete programmes with us are fit for purpose for the job market. And that's uh, the end of my input on the Institute of Technology. I think we're happy now to take any questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Ian. So let's just have a look if anything's come in on the Q&A. OK, so we have had a, a couple of questions in, which I will bank one over to Ian, if that's OK. And Ian, this has actually come in. Um, just a, a question for a bit more of elaboration around the academies. And, and I think this is coming from an employer as to, can you just explain a little bit more about the academies and, and, and where the idea came from? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the academy, uh, I think, as you said in one of your slides earlier, Emily, was, was a, a very different way of recruiting apprentices to what we've done before. And it really came out of conversations we've had with employers about what their expectations were um, in terms of the apprentice going uh, for an opportunity with them. And it gave uh, the, the candidates, the young people, the opportunity to try something uh, for a fairly intensive period, uh, i.e. The, the four weeks that they'd, they'd spend on the academy where they really got a, a taste of what it would be like working in, in that environment and that sector. So it gave them an opportunity to really pick up some basic skills and help them decide if that's uh, the route they wanted to go down, but also started to equip them with um, some really important um, hands-on practical skills uh, that would be of benefit to the employer. Um, so it was for those two two main reasons really one to give people the opportunity to to be fairly sure that that was the route they wanted to go down but also to, to give the employer an opportunity to to see uh, whether they were perhaps suited to, to that type of work and also gave them a, a great opportunity to showcase their skills as opposed to uh, maybe just applying on paper uh, for something and, and thinking that they might be interested and it was really successful uh, as you said we've done it for two years now um, and the feedback from employers has, has been really positive. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ian. So we've got a, a couple of questions here, which to be fair, actually, they we've had two separate questions, but actually I can answer both questions um, with one answer. Uh, one question was around how do I apply for an apprenticeship? And then another one was around how do I apply for a specific um, apprenticeship on the website? Um, I will, there will be the next slide that you'll see will be some email addresses. Uh, but in short, if what you want to do is apply for an apprenticeship, visit www.dudleycole.ac.uk, click apprenticeships and click apply now. Now we are in the middle of updating the college website. Um, so if you do go on the college website, for example, and the apprenticeship program that you are um, looking for is not listed on the website. It doesn't mean that we don't run it, it just means that we are in the middle of upgrading the website. If you do go on there and the apprenticeship that you're not that you're looking for is not on there, what I would say is email the address that I'm about to show you shortly um, and we can basically get your application put against the right program. Um, but in short, the, the, you can apply now the college website is up and running for applications and visit the college website click apprenticeships click apply now and then depending on whether you are currently in year 11 um, or are not currently in year 11 you will receive a, a telephone appointment with one of the apprenticeship hub team if you are not currently at school if you are currently at school you'll invite an in, you'll receive an invite for what we call a school leaver information session but the first step in applying for an apprenticeship is to go to the college website click apprenticeships and click apply now so I hope that's answered a couple of questions in one. Let's just see what else we've got coming in on the Q&A. Fantastic. This one, I mean, I, I, this question I will throw over to Ian. Um, it's, I suspect the answer is it depends which apprenticeship. Um, but Ian, particularly because um, my colleague Ian looks after engineering and engineering, for example, are, are heavily one of the areas that involves day release. We've had a, a question in Ian that I don't mind if you wouldn't mind answering um, about roughly how much time is spent at college versus how much time is spent in the workplace. Yeah, very, very good question. And uh, as you said, the, the answer really depends on what type of apprenticeship uh, you might be doing. So um, in engineering, for example, um, typically you would you would start on a three year apprenticeship uh, where your first year is spent two days a week at college um, doing your your foundation competence units as they're called uh, and then these are three days of uh, of the week in the workplace so it's a sort of 40 60 split in in that first year um, and then in the second and third year that would typically drop down to just one day a week at college and four days a week in the workplace um, but also in those four days in the workplace, uh, you would really be building your portfolio um, to, to go towards your qualification. So even if you're not spending time in college, you'd still, for some of that time at work, be spending time on your qualification. So that's a, a typical example in engineering. Uh, in other areas, it could be the more traditional one day a week at college uh, and four days a week at work th throughout the whole apprenticeship. So I think it's fair to say perhaps most of the construction trades as an example uh, work on that basis. Um, but also, as, as you said earlier on, Emily, um, a lot of apprenticeships, there isn't actually the need to, to come into to college uh, on a day release basis just because the delivery model with modern technology now especially uh, lends itself really well to, to learning in the workplace. So you might be at work five days a week, but be given um, a reasonable amount of time um, during that week um, to get your college work done and every apprentice regardless of whether you are coming into college uh, or doing it in the workplace there's an expectation that your employer will give you 20 percent uh, of your hours um, on your apprenticeship it's what's called off the job learning which is a little bit of a misleading term perhaps because it doesn't necessarily have to be away from the job um, to be learning um, but the the ratio uh, you could expect is at least um, one out of five days of, of your apprenticeship to be dedicated to, to learning, whether that's at college or in the workplace. Fantastic. Thank you, Ian. I think we've got time for, uh, for a couple more. Um, so the next question uh, I can answer very easily. Can you help me find an apprenticeship? Absolutely, yes. That's what we do. Um, the apprenticeship team, there is a team of six people who work in the apprenticeship team um, and our sole focus is to support you guys in finding an apprenticeship. So Ian, for example, will come to me um, with a vacancy for a local employer who's looking for an apprentice 
maintenance technician, plumber, accountant, whatever that job role might be. Um, and we have a talent bank and that talent bank is what we use to recruit from. So that talent bank is anybody who has shown an interest in an apprenticeship basically sit within our talent bank and we recruit from there. Um, so yes, absolutely. Some sectors, so for example, some of the trades, um, employers tend to be a little bit more responsive if someone approaches them themselves. But that being said, when you register with us for vacancies, um, we have got a, a, a guide for you and also things like letter templates for you to approach employers as well. Um, but absolutely, we will support you and help you find an apprenticeship. There's also the .gov apprenticeship website where you can apply online for apprenticeship vacancies as well. And as I say, we will support you in approaching employers them yourselves because I say some sectors, particularly things like the trades and hairdressers, um, actually tend to be more responsive to someone who approaches the employer direct. Um, but yes, in, in short, absolutely, there's a team on hand at the college. Um, barring two weeks at Christmas, we are around all year round to help you find that apprenticeship opportunity. Um, and then I think, I think have we got one more question, Ian, I think you were looking at. Yes, yeah, so um, I think a question that employers often ask us and is coming again today is um, are apprenticeships just for, for young people and, and for people going into a job? Um, to which the answer is no, apprenticeships now are open to anybody. Um, so it could be that if you're an employer and you've got a, a member of staff that you'd like to uh, train uh, in new skills or, or upskilling to a different area, uh, you could utilise the apprenticeship scheme to do that. So uh, that's, uh, as you said, Emily, what the employer engagement team will do is work with those employers and those staff to agree what the most appropriate apprenticeship programme would be, and then we would organise everything for you. So although the majority of apprenticeships are uh, for, for young people, um, leaving school or, or college and looking for their fir first job opportunity. It's also very much for people who are looking to, to upskill in, in their current job or perhaps move into to other new roles. We can very much help with that. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I think that just about brings us to a close today. So thank you to everyone who has put some questions through on the Q&A. As I mentioned at the beginning, if I can just ask that you put your name and your email address in the Q&A for us. As I say, that will just come through to myself, Jennifer and Ian, uh, but it just means that we'll be able to kind of send you some follow on information as well. Um, I hope you found that useful. We've got three uh, open events, well, two open events coming up which are coming up in the next sort of two months. So our open days um, are really a, an ideal opportunity for you to find out more about our range of courses and also the different campuses and, and hear firsthand from our industry expert. Obviously pre-COVID open days were open days and all the campuses were open and you were welcome to come and have a look around. Um, during current guidance and current lockdown, um, all of our open events are virtual. That being said, we are having fantastic success um, in adapting how we show case our amazing facilities to to everybody um, so our next virtual open days are we've got Saturday the 13th of March this year which is the virtual open event for both Dudley College of Technology and for Dudley Sixth and then on Saturday the 6th of March so in just about four weeks time is the virtual open day for the Black Country March's Institute of Technology which Ian mentioned earlier on um, do visit those websites um, and register your interest and as I say we have a whole range of virtual Virtual, um, sort of sessions and information events um, and information available for anybody looking to join Dudley College of Technology during this year. So all it, all it remains for me to say is if you are wanting more information on registering for an apprenticeship, please visit www.dudleycol dot ac dot uk click apprenticeships click apply now and as i mentioned if when you go on the course you're looking for isn't there it may just be that we're just updating that page um, so you can always email apprenticeships at dudleycold ac dot uk and myself or one of the team will get back to you 
If you are an employer wanting to know a little bit more about apprenticeships, then please email the employer services at dudleycall.ac.uk inbox and Ian and one of the team will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like a little bit more information about the Institute of Technology, please do visit the www.blackcountryinmarchesiot.ac.uk website or email iot at dudleycall.ac.uk and one of the IO team will get back to you. Also, feel free to, to visit our open days and I hope you found this session useful. Um, this has been repeated again on Thursday uh, and we look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you.